Hey everybody, it is Karen Hutton. I'm going live a little bit early to, uh, why am I going early? Because I, I was just sitting here waiting and I just thought, I'm just going to go on early because I feel like it. <laughs> and that way it gives people a chance to kind of get in here, get the call that we're going live and that I've got some wonderful friends coming by to I think this has been my week little weird things like that I know all the time have just been kind of like flipping around I forget I'm just gonna look it up because I have my iPad right here and uh, I'm gonna get this website right Because I'm determined that way and it's kind of annoying that I'm determined that way but hey we haven't officially started the live even though I did um, so where you want to go to check this out is Sedona photo sin syn dot org and perhaps they will uh, pop that in the chat So enjoy this uh, reflection and my print behind me. I can keep talking, I think. Hopefully it won't disconnect. Um. You know, live is exactly what it says. It's live. It is alive.
It is imperfect. And so am I. So, um, hang on a second, because we got, now I think my feed is gonna be better. I'm not gonna tell you what just happened, but I will tell you that this kind of shit has been going on all week. It's the little things and they're just kicking my ass. So I, I'll admit it, it's been, it's been a really challenging week. So is this better? Is this better? Is this better? Because uh, nobody's talking. So Frederick, I see you in there. Tell me in the chat, is this now a better, smoother, more lovely feed stream? Yeah, see? You know why? Because I turned my Wi-Fi on. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. So where's everybody calling in from? Calling in, what do you say? Joining, where are you joining from? Usually we see countries all over the world. Thank you, you guys, for letting me know that's better. Um, and thank you for letting me know that it wasn't. So where are y'all coming from? So today, while you're getting in here and telling me where y'all where are coming from, I will say that uh, I'm going to bring them in here in a minute, but um, Renee Robin is like my, I don't know, my little goth soul sister. She's like one of the most freaking incredible, talented people that I know in so many ways, in so many ways. And we have, we're so many like overlaps, but her official, I'm, I, this is why I wanted to print it, her official description is she's a Canadian born digital artist and photographer, voracious travel addict and retouching instructor. If you go to, uh, see here I go with the websites. We'll talk about her website, where to find her. because She is freaking amazing on so many levels. Like I say, that's why I want to talk about photography. This, this whole live on Fridays is aimed at my photographer friends and collectors and people interested in photography and art and life and, you know, just kind of that, that, that place where purpose and life and art and fa fabulosity all kind of, you know, do that and make a fun conversation. So um, yeah, that's why Frederick and Renee, that's, that's right here in this zone right here. That's where we all met many years ago. And so that's, I haven't talked to them together for a really long time because we've all been so busy. So I wanted to bring them on in here and talk. And Frederick, who is, who, who is just like my, you know, brother from another mother, He's a passionate, so I'm, I just, I pulled this off the internet because I thought, what does the internet have to say about these friends of mine? Like if I were introducing him and I didn't know them, cause like some of you might not know him. So, but what, so what would you be reading about them? He is a passionate entrepreneur, marketer, and host of one of the world's most popular photography podcasts, This Week in Photo. And I can, I can attest that he's all those things, but he's so much more and we are so much more. So where are y'all coming from? Just pop it in here. Today's overall theme, we're gonna get talking about stuff and I just wanted to introduce who they were so you kind of know what page we're on. Those of you who know Frederick and Renee know what, a, what an incredible duo they are. None of us work together. We're all off doing our own things, coming together here to chat, but it's an ask me anything theme today. So you can ask questions. I'm gonna keep an eye on the stream. We're gonna uh, post questions and kind of get into it starting about now. So Frederick and Renee, who are in the house, just throw in an invite to join and I'll bring you in and we'll kick it off from here. Now that I got my bumpy start out of the way. I turn my Wi-Fi off at night so it doesn't make my brain go crazier than it already is. So, um, yeah, it's going to get very animated. Here we go. Renee's coming in first. Our little chickadee. We'll be here momentarily. Frederick will be uh, sending over his invite momentarily and we'll get him in here. There she is. Hi, Hi. darling. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm just kind of like prepping this thing up. It's yeah. It's yeah, <laughs> I know. It's, it's total props. I gotta, I gotta move my, I put it, I have this like $17 tripod just so I don't have to like in the middle of I'm talking, the phone goes. <laughs> <and falls. laughs> Cause you, you know, now that you've experienced some of my uh, 
tech gremlins this week you know that can happen did i miss okay. your invite did i miss his request why it just popped up it did where did it, it go did. see okay frederick requested why am i not seeing it because it's tech gremlin week at karen hutton's <laughs> house <laughs> uh frederick joined where she, okay can you send it again this can you send it again see renee's our renee's our social media maven she knows everything so no, she sits there and oh goes God, no <laughs> <laughs> i've never i've never even done an instagram live before so really the first oh this is you're another virgin i love it like yeah there's virgin. not many of those left I'm still looking for the request. Frederick, I don't see it. Won't let you resend. Oh, Frederick. Okay, jump out and jump back in. If you if you rejoin, can, if he rejoins, that should work, right? Are you allowed to have like three people on an Instagram? Yeah, account? absolutely. Oh. You can have up to four. Oh. That's a new feature. See, a quadruple. A quadruple. A quad, yeah. If it, if, it, if three is a thruple, then four is a quadruple? Okay. <laughs> if you say so. I don't know. So, <laughs> so there's another thing I wanted to try. Let me see if this actually works. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. Here it is. I found it. I found something. Let me, Let me see, see if that, that works. Oh, yes. Made it. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I knew it would work eventually. I knew it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just been tech hell. It's been freaking tech hell i've hated it it's just oh my god i was yeah. like so mad i <laughs> couldn't get the announcement in my story right yesterday and i'm writing to renee going i don't want to necessarily go all expletive crazy because i'm trying to clean up my act but f f f <laughs> <laughs> you're channeling so renee robin nice <laughs> yeah it's fair you're allowed to let your inner Tourette's out <laughs> yeah i know thanks thanks <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God. yeah, she comes out whether I like it or not, I'm afraid, uh, quite often. So how are you guys? This is the first time we've, like, been together in a I really know. long time. It feels like last the time, Avengers, Avengers Assemble. Time, I know. Last time we saw each other was in San Jose. Was that. it? I thought so. Yeah. And and we, like, hung out, and we had lunch. and we I still just... had blue hair, so that's been a long time, because that was, like, years ago <laughs> i think i remember that karen didn't i send you that picture of us all three of us i think yeah. i said no you it, sent me maybe i sent it you to sent, you renee yeah you sent it to uh, you sent me the picture of us doing the chat right 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 see which is so awesome. many pictures so many pictures yeah <laughs> i hear i can i hear i can share a picture in because i want to do that let me see can I share does that let me share a picture no because I have a picture I want to, I actually want to share with, with the crowd because today's a very auspicious day, but I got to yeah, do it Yeah, like planned by that, by the way. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Okay. This is Renee Robin. Oh, look at that. Our chat comes up. That's super awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so check that out. What am I, what am I showing everybody? Yeah, so that was how I got started in professional photography. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to you there? I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, I that. was uh, that, riding, like... my, riding my motorbike to a job that I hated, and I got hit and run over. And I spent uh, the next two, well, the next six months, well, five days in the hospital, a bunch of them in the ICU unit, and then uh, spent six months learning how to walk again, two years learning how to run, and the Yay. rest of my life since then, <laughs> trying to figure it out, but... Yeah, right. that was that was one of the only photos I ever let be taken of me in that time period. I didn't let anybody take photos of any of it. And I wish that I did on the topic of photography. Yeah. I wish that I'd let people document it, but I was so fucking angry. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. How, how did it happen, Renee? Were you cut off? Was it ice or like I, malfunction? It was like, what happened? a crotch rocket to work. Okay, it wasn't ice. <laughs> that CBR, right? Was it that CBR F4? Yeah, it is CBR. Yep. Um, I called it the F3.5 because I didn't have money for bikes, so I built one. But uh, yeah, it was um, riding to work in the morning and uh, it was rush hour traffic, and uh, I was in the middle lane. And I was going north on, on one of the freeways, and 
Um, I needed to get into the right-hand lane, so I did what many stupid bikers do, is get into the lane a little bit faster than you should. And um, the other person, uh, basically, we both fucked up. She didn't shoulder check, and I basically cut into the lane sooner than I should have. And I was in the lane first, and I saw her tires come over the white line, and I was like, crap, I just cut a vehicle off behind me, so if I hit the brakes, that person's going to hit and run over me. But if I punch it, maybe I can get ahead fast enough to, like, be okay. And what happens when you're on two wheels, when you hit the back wheel, is it spins, and I just went under the truck. So. Oh. Uh, yeah. And I feel I'm... really, really bad to that driver of that other vehicle, because she felt the thump thump. I've never, I've only ever seen her hands. I don't actually know what her <sighs> face looks like. Um, I, because I, I mean, it was never identified to me what person she was in the crowd of people watching me. Lay on the ground, try to not scream. <laughs> oh my god! And yeah, then like imagine. paramedics came and all that. Yeah, yeah, they they came in about twenty minutes. So it was just like laying there on the ground, like so. I don't know. This is a uh, this might be a little bit uh, graphic for some people. So if, uh, you might want to just mute <laughs> for a sec. <laughs> but, Get used uh, to that. Yeah, yeah well, I know. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, when I, I mean, so like I used to do like, you know, competitive martial arts and like I grew up on a farm and like, you know, bodily injury was something I was very comfortable with and very used to and like managing pain, getting run over was definitely like the max that I'd experienced at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew that I had to stay calm. I knew that if I freaked out, um, yeah, exactly. When two people change lanes at the same time, it's always a disaster. And if you're on a bike, you're going to lose. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I was laying there and I was just like, like this fucking hurts because I didn't lose consciousness, right? And I was, I was bleeding. Uh, the bones had come through my leg, and I had all my leathers on. I had everything. Like, so here's the thing: if I had, if I had my, if I had not been run over, I would have literally walked away. I had like a tiny scrape on my knee where something that I was sliding on had cut through my leathers, and that was it. Um, but I got run over, so it's a very different story. <laughs> but ah. uh, um, so I was like laying there on the ground and I'm just like, okay, like we have to stay calm. We have to stay calm. We have to stay calm. Like, however we can do that. Um, but it's like, it's fucking hurting. Right. And I'm just like, I'm just waiting for shock to hit. Cause like, I know what shock feels like. And I'm like, yeah, shock. Like, come on. Yeah, like, in. Like, I'm like, come on, science, do the stuff that you're made to do. Um, <laughs> And it Where are these happening. mythical endorphins, right? I yeah, know. Well, that's it, right? Like, I know, I know what that feels like. So I was just like, oh my God, like, how can I, like, like, how? Because, like, I'm starting to, like, lose it. And I know that if I start screaming, it's only going to get worse, right? So I was just like, like, breathe. And I have my helmet on. And, like, my music is still on my ears. Like, I don't know if I have a spinal injury because, like, I rolled, right? And so I was just like, we have to stay, like, really still. We don't want to move anything. Like, people are trying to talk to me, but I can't hear them because the music's in my pocket. And the pocket is the side that I'm laying on. So, like, we just got to, like, chill um and so i was just like like i'm starting to tap out and you know the ambulance isn't there yet so i, I was like okay like what what can we do and so i put my fingers because i was laying sort of in the fetal position on my left shoulder and uh i put my fingers underneath my hamstring and i pulled my leg just gently and i felt the sag mm. and like the shifting of the bones and i was mm. like there it is and like <laughs> shock hit and like all the like you know my brain just like dumped the chemicals into my system and i was like oh thank god <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you had so, to hack your body after an accident to trigger the the body to come into your rescue right? <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it was like like yeah it fucking hurt but like it wasn't hurting enough to for like the shock to really hit yeah like, your I body's need... going we're good we're good yeah, I, was yeah. Like, I just need like the glossy like i'm disconnected i might throw up in my helmet feeling like whatever like i need this to stop oh. but i also know enough about being injured badly that i was like i'm not taking my helmet off because i don't know if i've injured my spine like i don't know what's hurt other than the part that i got run over yeah. so yeah how I, do they I... get the helmet off renee in, in those situations when they don't know if there's a spinal injury or not do they cut yeah, it so off before before they even um, like touch the helmet or anything, they basically like really carefully unzip my jacket. And then the, the paramedic was just like running their hands very carefully, like disc by disc up my back. And I, you know, when I was having to, sh you know, they were having to show cause I had fucking heavy metal blaring in my ears. <laughs> 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 what was the song? What was the song? I don't even remember anymore. Rob was Zombie, a lot. right? I mean, I was, I was laying there for like a good 20 before the ambulance showed up. Cause it was rush hour, right? So. <sighs> um 
but uh yeah you know and they're just like you know like how's your back feeling and I was like honestly my back feels fine I was like my leg hurts like hell but I don't know if I'm not noticing my back because my leg hurts more like I don't know the answer mm -hmm. um so they like ran their fingers up the up the discs and there was no like weird swelling or weird numb numbness or anything and they were like oh how's your fingers and toes and I was like oh I can fucking feel them like <laughs> <laughs> If I had broken my back, it did not sever the fucking cord. <laughs> like, oh, wow. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, so then once they did that, they, like, very, very carefully, like, pulled um, the helmet off, and then, um, you know, they were just, like, looking at me, and there's, like, this pool of red on the ground, and they're just like, cool. <laughs> Let's get you in there. But, like, honestly, the worst part out of all of it um, was pulling the boot off my leg in the... <gasps> They didn't that cut helps. it off. They pulled that. it off. So, well, because of their riding boots, right? So they're like, they're made to right. keep my feet alive. Right. So like, you know, if we slide like that, like I have no injuries, which admittedly, apart from being squished by force, <laughs> I had no yeah. injuries. Right. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was like, that was pretty shitty. Um, and, uh, and I was so disappointed because they had to, uh, like, just, like, the fastest way, because they had to stop the bleeding and everything, like, as, as quickly as they could. Um, so they had to, like, cut off my riding pants. <laughs> and so anyway, so, I mean, so I guess I'm always trying to be funny in inappropriate situations. And so there's, like... <laughs> there's, I hadn't like, noticed. Whole, yeah. <laughs> there's, like, this whole ambulance full of, like, paramedics and shit. And they're all, like, hot and young. And I'm, like, and I'm sitting there with my eyes closed, just, like, trying. And I'm also, I have a phobia of needles. And they're like punching all kinds of shit into my arms. And I'm just like, this is not okay. Like the needles are fucking terrible. They hadn't got to the boot yet. Um, but I'm sitting there like with my eyes closed. And I was like, hey guys, hey guys. And they're like, what? And I was like, I always had this like fantasy of mine, but in my fantasy, it didn't hurt so bad. <laughs> 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 and they just like put the gas back on. And they're like, that's enough of that. <laughs> oh uh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I can totally see that. I can yeah, totally right? so, like, see that. They had to cut like everything except for my riding jacket because that came off easy. I still have that jacket. It's still fine. Like, um, which is why you pay for good gear because like I slid. I was going like seventy when I hit the ground, and I slid, and my jacket is literally fine. Um, so yeah, it was worth wow. the money. But uh, yeah, they're like cutting off my like favorite riding pants. I'm just like, oh no, this sucks. And then they're like, oh, we gotta get the boot off. And I was like, oh no, the boot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. and there's, there's a broken foot in there <laughs> like there's nothing to hold on to because it's also broken to like get the boot off and it's tight and everything and i was just like you're just gonna have to pull really hard and i'm just gonna maybe throw up on you <laughs> oh my god and that yeah. and so the break then was where the bandage is yeah, so, well, that's, it was broken further up, too. Um, oh. So, it, like, the whole tib fib was, like, busted all the way through. Um, but there's also, in that image, uh, a rod now that has been inserted into my leg with a bunch of screws. So that was, like, post-surgery. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. The, bandage, the bandage is where all the bones came through. So, oh. were you, like, where were you? Were you in Edmonton? or where? Yeah, yeah I, was a, I was in Edmonton. Okay, so, so you had Canadian is... health care. So, good. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yes right? and no. Yes and no. I mean, I had to wait like a bunch of hours in a hallway for an operator, but an operation. But <laughs> it was but like still, you got months, the operation. But... Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, great. that was uh, pretty shitty. But that was eleven so you, years ago today. Eleven years ago today. Do you do you set off? I think you do set off the uh, uh, depends metal on the detector. country, but yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what's really fun though is when like security is like squeezing my leg to be like, "Are you sure?" And I'm like, "I didn't fucking have surgery to put a bone in my leg. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this fucking hurts. Stop squeezing it. <laughs> Stop squeezing it." <laughs> oh, that's a T-shirt. Her... We need is a T-shirt with her... Renee Renee Robin slogans on it. That's what yeah. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Stop squeezing it. <laughs> yeah, that fucking sucks. <laughs> and it's like, every, so many people have metal in their bodies from like various accidents. Like, why is this weird for you? Like, you probably see 50 of us in a day. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stop squeezing, you asshole. It's probably like oh, an internal God. game. They're like, here's one. Let's see. Let's see how hard we can squeeze before you make her say something. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's like, I know it's a felony if I hit you, but goddamn, you were testing me. <laughs> 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 is it? If it's involuntary, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Oh my god. 
No, that was a real, that was a life changer, man. That changed yeah, everything. Yeah, well, so the invol involuntary hitting part uh, is kind of funny. So, um, and I'll, I'll wrap this up in a minute because this is kind of gross too. But I mean, the whole thing was gross. Um, so there was at one point, um, like I almost had to have my leg amputated because it was getting really infected and like the blood was flowing in, but it wasn't flowing out. And basically like my leg was rotting from the knee down. Dude. And uh, we couldn't figure out why. And so um, I went to a, uh, the hospital and there was a, a wound specialist there. And this guy is a fucking field medic from the army. <laughs> it's actually his previous job. He just like wow. deployed to Afghanistan a bunch of times in Iraq and was like, enough of that shit. And he's just like, so he's like the last step at the hospital before he cuts, like people get their limbs cut off, right? And so you get in there and admittedly, like, apart from it being like the best and worst experience with healthcare ever, um, I have to respect the guy because he was just like, okay, so here's the deal. You know, you come in here. Um, he's like, I'm the last stop before we cut parts off of you. And he's like, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't do drugs. He's like, if I test or smell any of that on you, he's like, I'll cut your fucking leg off myself. And I was like, yes, this is awesome. This is what healthcare should be. This is the fucking accountability to the people who are in here. Like. <laughs> fuck you pull your weight and I was like that's fair man like that's on you it's like that's on me like and I don't drink or smoke or do drugs anyway so I don't like yeah that's easy so yeah. anyways so what they had to do was they, they take these like they're like fucking crochet hooks um and so like it's all stitched up but there's like pus and shit coming out of like where the wounds came out or the bones came out and uh <laughs> so <laughs> Anyways, this is like also funny, but also horrible. So he's sitting there and he's like, okay, so we have to like, you know, just like get some of the pus out and like some of that like rotting stuff out. And I was like, oh yeah, cool. How are we going to do that? And he's like, so you're going to hold on to these little metal bars here. And I was like, what? And he takes his fucking crochet hook and jams it in between the stitches, like into the fucking meat and <laughs> just starts like pulling shit out of my leg. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> This hurts, like, no anesthetic, no fucking nothing. And I was like, of course you're in the fucking army. Like, ah, this is not a war zone. Wow. <laughs> oh, Nobody's my shooting God. at us. Give me something, you asshole. <laughs> like, why not? Why, why, no, why no anesthesia or anything? Apparently, like, it just takes too long to, like, to take effect. And, like, they push through so many people every wait. day. I'd be okay right? with waiting a couple minutes. But they don't want to wait, right? <laughs> like, they don't want to wait. And so they fucking don't. And yeah, like, so they hit just me. like... Hit me across his... the jaw, knock me out. Jumping, <laughs> right? you know? Trust me, it hurts enough you almost faint. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, so they like jam these crochet hooks into my fucking leg and just start like pulling out this like rotted meat and stuff. And anyways, yeah, between that and acupuncture, I was able to save my leg. But um, you know, like talk about like reflex to hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy just, oh my like there's no God. warning of like this is what we're gonna do and it's probably gonna hurt like a bitch it's just like cool so yeah you see these bars here we're just gonna go and you're like oh <laughs> you should tell this story to anybody considering buying a motorcycle you know <laughs> so, <laughs> just, wait, just you in know, case <laughs> i rode a motorcycle we had motorcycles for a short bit and i rode and had the leathers and did everything but having trained horses for 45 years i knew it was just a matter of time before i fell because you know yeah. Yeah. That's what's yeah. going to happen. So I rode until it was like, it was fun. I had my fun. And then I was like, I'm done now. I haven't fallen down yet. And um, this will be hey, my, great, my great experience. I had an accident bye -bye. on a motorcycle, Renee. Like, my, my accident was not nearly as dramatic as yours. It's actually <laughs> embarrassing. I just got a motorcycle that yeah. was, I think it was like a thousand CC. And I think I weighed a buck oh five at the time. <laughs> so I, got, I got it. And I hadn't. I just finished the whole motorcycle safety course. So I was like, yeah, I'm so California Highway CCs Patrol, you know. So ease into that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm literally I was on I was I was in the military at the time. I was stationed at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And I remember I was on my way to work and I hit an intersection. And you know how like if you're in a car, you're like, oh it's turning yellow, I can make this. I was on a bike and I decided to do that move, not understanding the laws of momentum and gravity. <laughs> so, yeah, and physics and, and traction. And gyroscope, gyroscope. So I turn and some car decided to come in front of me. So I hit the brakes mid turn while leaning. And nope, nope. <laughs> oh. Never do that. Never hit the brakes while in a turn. So no, did that. no. Didn't break anything. It was more embarrassing than anything. You know, yeah, I mean, like, did you, you, you didn't yeah. high side or anything? Did you like speed wobble or just like go down? 
No, it was it was so slow. It was just like, yeah. eh, boop. <laughs> <laughs> And then you got to was... struggle to pick up the bike. And yeah, get and I didn't know bike. how to do that. I was new. I didn't know how to pick up a bike. Remember, a buck oh five and a thousand cc motorcycle. So I'm like, uh, how do you get this thing? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So luckily, so... some people came and helped me, and we pushed it to the side. And then I ex explained to the base commander, to my commander, wh why yeah. I was, you know, riding a bike in experience. So, but Amazing. no pus. No, no, yeah, no pus, no blood, <laughs> no crochet hook. Wow, this is it. So, so the big, the, this begs first. I have FedEx out in front, so I don't know if I'm gonna have to answer the door or not. But, yeah. um, so it begs the question then, like, are you the type of person that, like, after all this time, 11 years later, like, what's the biggest takeaway? What was the biggest lesson? Like, what, where did that take you? Well, you know, I mean, it just it just forced me into something that I was playing with at the time. It's like all my skills up to that point um, always involved being physically very capable. So like growing up on a farm and then like going into trade school, being a fire performer, working labor jobs. Everything was like body, 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 body had to be strong, you know, um, and, you know, trade school is just that's what it is. Right. And then to have all of that taken away with, from me, like I had nothing else. And I was just like, oh my fucking God, like how am I gonna pay my rent that's due? And like, you know, I don't know. I mean, at that point, like, am I ever gonna walk again? Like, you know, I just like, I just like switch gears into, I completely forgot about what could be. Like, I just threw that out, right? And I was like, okay. I just like had to like immediately accept what reality was, which was like, okay, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life on crutches or in a wheelchair. And we have to figure out what to do with that. And so photography I've been doing for like a little bit at that time. And I was just like, well, everything It's not very often you get like a full reset on your life, you know, just like handed mm -hmm. to you on a silver platter. And that's kind of what happened. And so I was just like, well, we've been doing this photography thing. I guess I better learn compositing or compositing wasn't really a word back then. Um, it was uh you know, I was like, well, how, like, I can't get to the world, so I'm going to figure out how to bring the world to me, because there were, like, digital artists, like, sorry, digital painters, and then there were photographers, but there weren't a lot of people doing both, like, Flurn didn't exist at the time, Creative Live didn't exist at the time, like, none of these, like, big education platforms, and I was just like, okay, so I'm going to figure out how to bring the world to me, because, like, I've been modeling at that point for, like, 11 years, and I didn't want to compete, or 12 years, 12 years, yeah. Um, but I didn't want to compete with all my photography friends. And I also knew I was like, I can't walk, so I can't shoot weddings, right? I can't mm -hmm. do this, so I can't do that. I can't do this, so I can't do that. So I was like, well, what can I do? And I was like, well, I can figure out how to bring the world to me. And then I can kind of try to give that to my clients. And so that's what I did. And so, yeah, the takeaway was just like, you know, if everything is taken away from you, sometimes other doors do open if you look for them. But you got you to gotta really look. Um, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, mm -hmm. I just, I just couldn't allow myself to feel sorry for myself. I was just like, okay, like, you know, we're always going to drive an automatic car because I can drive that with my left foot. And, uh, I, you know, I can carry a backpack on, on my back of stuff and, you know, it'll be crutches and that's fine. So mm -hmm. I remember the first day, uh, it was December where I took a step without like being assisted only one step. Um, and that opened up my whole world. Um, to being like, oh my God, maybe I can walk again. Maybe I can dance again. Maybe I can do all this other stuff again. And I just fucking bawled. <laughs> oh. like that one step, I just fucking cried because I was That's like, awesome. holy shit, like here's the possibilities. Maybe I can have some of my old life back. <clears throat> so. Wow. And you did. It. You got it all back. You yeah, got it all back. It. <laughs> That's a, that's a, you know what, you know what that step was? That's a quantum step. That's, you stepped into possibility. That's quantum. It just yep. like, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. What a yeah. Hey, Wait, way. hang on. Speaking, speaking of doors, somebody's at my door. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> my on. electrician is here. So give me one second and I'll be right yeah. back. Okay. Life. Then I got a question when you get back. Okay. Right back. <laughs> okay. 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 Just go. <laughs> oh, he pauses his. Because he's, mm, he's fancy that way. I don't even know how to pause on this thing. <laughs> I was just thinking, do I know how to pause on this thing? I don't know. I know I know how to not you know how to have a really bad feed. Just <laughs> turn off my Wi-Fi. But uh, 
that is quite a story. I mean, and that was actually, um, so when I started doing these lives, I thought, what am I going to do with them? Right. And I wanted, mm -hmm. I didn't just want to get on and just talk about nothing. And I didn't necessarily want it to be like a show either, but I wanted to be able to have conversations about stuff that matters, not in a way that like, you know, it could be about business or whatever, but I, it's, it's photography oriented, but it's about that space, kind of that quantum level space where, okay, you're a photography, but right in here somewhere, we work with, we work with um, time and light. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't get much like quantum material than that. And, and I just think we're in a time, you know, on the planet where, where we have possibilities that maybe we hadn't counted on before <clears throat> and diff different perspectives that we can have that we never considered having before and how those kind of changes can affect not only our art and our work, but our lives. And you just told, preach the whole story right there. That was brilliant. <laughs> I didn't even tell you I was thinking about that. <laughs> no. And that's, and that's quantum. So <laughs> yeah, it's working. It's working. <laughs> Victory. So that's, that's freaking brilliant. I mean, I know my, my chain. Well, I've had a couple cause I'm, quite a bit older than you but not that much okay <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm your your older sister um <laughs> yeah um that one of mine was when my back because I had a bad back I trained horses for 45 years and so um and taught riding and you know equestrian sports and all that kind of thing so when my back went and the day the day I stepped off one of my horses it was in training I, and it had been really bad and I was keeping going by taking Advil or was it aspirin? I think it was Excedrin at the time. Because Excedrin was my actually my kind of, I liked it because of the high that it gave me because of <laughs> all the, kind of made you go like that. And I used to have like really good visions then. Plus it was a good painkiller. And so, and I figured out if, you know, how much you have to eat, be able to eat it without it bothering your stomach. So I had it down and I could keep writing until the day I couldn't. And I got off and I couldn't, I got, I stepped off the horse and stood on the ground and I couldn't move. And so one of my students was nearby and he said, are you okay? And I said, um, nope, yeah. I can't get the saddle off. I can't take a step. I can't do anything. It hurts so bad. I was just like, I couldn't even breathe yeah. just standing there. And so everybody had to take over and take the horse and I had to figure out, they had to help me off to the side. And it was like, what do I do now? And really I had had, I didn't, I, I like, uh, done eight years of, to become a voice coach, the way that I coached then for 25 years after that was um, um, involved a lot of training, not just about the, the mechanism, which, you know, you've had some experience with this now, but, you know, to be able to tie it into the person and their, and their just all the levels that a voice for it to really come open has to be tied into. It takes a lot of training to be yeah. able to, to handle that. So my voice coach for myself, because I was an actor and was doing voiceovers myself, she was like, you got to let me train you to teach voice. You got to do it. And then when this happened, she goes, you just like you, when this is what triggered the, the memory was when you said the same thing, which is yeah. you have to face the possibility <clears throat> that you may not be able to walk. Yeah. Because yeah. I literally, <laughs> yeah, if I got up in the middle of the night, I couldn't walk to the bathroom. I would have to like drag myself across the floor. Yeah. And, and that was just life. I just, just, you know, the high, really high pain tolerance and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So I finally acquiesced because I literally had no other way to make a living. And yeah. so she, she helped me get that business going. And that's how it happened was under duress. I did, <laughs> I did, I kept teaching writing for a while because I um, had to make money somehow, but I, I did it from the sidelines and it really, really wasn't the same. So when my voice business got going, I had to stop teaching writing. Yeah. heartbreaking because I grew up on horses so around horses. but yeah so these so these uh moments that change your life are pretty you got to think they're divinely I think they are anyway divinely orchestrated and to um to accept you know the the, the accept here's the reality so here's how we have to think and then to look back and realize wow there was some divine orchestration. What about you, well, Frederick? I mean, well, can well, I, go can ahead, I Renee. Like touch on that quickly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I have to, I have to acknowledge the fact, though. Like, I used to think that that way, but I don't so much anymore now because the more like so since then, I've traveled a lot and I've seen a lot of the world, um, and I've come to realize that 
you know, living in a country with the opportunity, which admittedly, you know, like I was fucking broke as shit. Um, but I was fortunate enough um, to, you know, even though I had a shitty camera, I was fortunate enough to have a camera. I was fortunate enough to live in a country where I could make a living as a photographer. Like, it, like being able to think that something is divinely orchestrated is uh, sometimes I find like a very fortunate way of thinking because if this had happened, if I had had my leg crushed and I lived in a different country in a very different, like maybe a caste system or something, my life would have possibly just been over. Like mm -hmm. there isn't like, we are lucky to live in parts of the world and in the time that we do to be able to say that like, yeah, bad things, you can turn them into something new because a lot of times, a lot of times in the world, like just historically speaking um, and where we live now, we're just so fucking lucky to yes. have those options to us. Agree. I completely yeah. agree. And in fact, I had spent a number of years hustling with that very idea Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm older than you, so I've had more time to think about it. <laughs> because because of the blessings and the and the privileges, my mother used to raise us. Going, you have to understand your privilege. You know, yeah. this is a privileged life that you're living, mm -hmm. and you better appreciate it. And I don't want to hear any whining. Basically, you know, <laughs> yeah. there will be no complaining, and you yeah. know, because it could be so much worse. And she, you know, she showed me how. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a long time going. Because you see, I grew up talking directly to God. I mean, that was just, I just had a through line. Mm -hmm. that was, I mean, and I thought that was normal. And yeah. so I spent a long time thinking, <clears throat> well, why am I here then? You know, yeah. so was it just luck? Because I, I didn't, I just had a different kind of upbringing that taught me it wasn't luck. Well, then what was it? Mm -hmm. And that's why when I say divinely orchestrated, yeah, you could have been, but you weren't. Mm -hmm. That was, that was the part of that equation that, kept stopping me in my tracks, but I wasn't in another country where these treatments weren't available. I was here. How do I reconcile that? Why am I better? Why is my, why should my life be better than somebody else's? Mm -hmm. Like it, it took a really long time. And I finally realized, you know what? I have no fucking idea. Yeah. But, <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, but, no but I know enough about the quantum space. You can study quantum physics to get a little bit of this. But also because of my upbringing and because of the visions and the, you know, the direct contact I had to understand that I don't have to know why I just am. And I better goddamn pardon my language. I shouldn't say it like that because somebody pointed out you shouldn't say goddamn. And you're, and you're right. <laughs> and see, I've been cleaning up my act really well. And then, and then I, I get around you and there goes my potty mouth. So I'm going to really try to rein it in. So but I'm really passionate about this because because I finally realized that. I wasn't in, an, in another country. I was here and it was a gift and I'm privileged. And I thank God for that because yeah. I know there is one and because I'm connected to that. And mm -hmm. um, that became part of the purpose of my life because I'm like, yeah. if I've been given these gifts, then I better maximize them and I better share them and, and be, the, be the whatever, you know, be the standard, be the, you know, to the best of my ability. I'm yeah. not out there, you know, in, in the forefront, but I'm trying to make the difference that I can yeah. with the blessings and the talents and the gifts I've been given. So I hear you. Yeah. And I say that, too. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, that was something that um, I was talking to someone that I know about, you know, like, how does he deal with the fact of, you know, uh, the immense uh, privilege that he was born into and uh, his privilege was not necessarily race or, or gender, but um, like financial luck you just very very lucky that way um and i was just and he's just like well what do i do with it and i was like everything that you fucking can and i was like the worst thing that you can do is squander anything that's been given to you whatever that right. is right so like whatever you believe in it doesn't matter to me but i was like you have to just do as much as you can that's available to you and whatever that looks like is whatever that is right you know? yeah yep. so I kind of vent, I vent on that one. I rant on that one quite extensively. <laughs> I think, well, and I think that's right because I think there's a, you know, the thing that bothers me is there's, you know, so much shame has been introduced for, and we'll get into all what I think, why I think that is. But um, I answer to no one but God. I, you know, I will not be shamed by the gifts I've been given because a human didn't give them to me and I didn't take them. They were given as, and, you know, 
on my worst days when I was like mad at life, I, I realized, mm -mm, don't be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my mama taught me better than that. And so did my, um, my connection to something quite a bit more than myself. And so mm -hmm. just figuring out how to reconcile that in a human body, whatever your gender and color and everything like that, that's, you know, just part of the journey. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think, it, I think you're right on, you know, say, use your gift whatever degree you can yeah whatever they are <laughs> yeah and we've been leaving frederick out of this conversation yeah but you're back frederick. now so that's good yeah yeah sorry about that so i've been i've been dealing with a with a i have a logitech one of those smart doorbells <laughs> that i've tried to install <laughs> myself oh um, good, good job mm. <laughs> not, not good job so Speaking of someone who knows what they're doing is here now correcting my <laughs> mistakes so that's what <laughs> that's what nice I'm doing. nice so, that's where we are. I don't I wonder if it's true. I wonder if it's true in electronics where it's easier to edit than to write from scratch. Maybe. I, yeah. But I figure California doesn't need another fire. So why don't we uh, <laughs> just let somebody <laughs> who knows what do they this do. right. <laughs> yep. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Yep. So anyway, so well, this is this is us going on and on. So what what goes through your mind? Like, like, do you have one of those moments? I didn't. Well, I didn't know where we were going to go. I just knew we were going to go well, somewhere. Set it up today, because so. I was. I didn't hear that first part of the conversation. So, so okay. So Renee, how do we set it up for him? Um. So I got squished. Karen fucked her back. Learn breaking horses and breaking herself in the same process. Yeah. And so both of us were forced into careers that we didn't really know what the fuck we were going to do with that. And then that turned into we are very fortunate to live in countries where when all of our options are taken away from us, we can find another option. Yeah. And, um, you know, recognizing that <laughs> wherever yeah. that comes from or whatever you believe that's in. But uh, so if you point had... of inflection, right? Like when mm -hmm. right. like the hero's yeah. journey, the hero hits this point and and has to deal with something and then it redefines him or her and then they move in a different direction and realize that's that. what happened we're not saying that had to have happened to you but you know we just it we happens went, all the time though that's I know. the thing it, yeah. it happens it happens i could give you any number of instances where that's happened the most recent one um was unfortunately the passing of my dad so my dad just passed away we just buried him a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. and the Without going into all the details about that, the one of the revelations that came out of that is you don't really, you know, speaking specifically about family, right? You don't really know people until you've gone to battle with them, right? Or yeah. until it's the, the one of the lessons was stress testing, right? So like Elon Musk will will launch a rocket multiple times and watch it blow up to stress test it to find where the faults happen or where does it break yeah where does it break relationships mm -hmm. you never know what kind of relationship you're in until you're under pressure and you know the the person has to perform when everything's not great and beautiful like all that stuff you never know like even in the military you never know the people that are fighting next to you until you're at war and bullets yeah. are flying you never know that person. That person can say, yeah, I got your back, man, all this stuff. And then <laughs> bullets start flying and they're behind you cowering, right? So yeah. you, you don't know until until you're battle tested. And I've I've learned that lesson over and over again, you know, most recently with this this whole thing with the with the with my dad passing and then just on and on and on, where, you know, everything is great until something stresses a situation and then the reality reveals itself. So mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, those those kind of situations help define my path. And then kind of the reset, one of the reset moments in my life was, you know, one of them, one of the big ones was uh, when I was at Adobe, I was a senior marketing manager at Adobe for Lightroom Photoshop for the pro photographer segment. And that was the dream job. So I thought for a photographer is like, holy crap, I like cookies. And I'm going to the factory where they make cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what could be better? Then it was great. You know, Adobe's a great company. It's dialed in. It is like, you know, if you're going to work for a company, Adobe's one of the companies where you want to work for. It's just, it's that company where you're like, holy shit, I get to work here. Um, but when they laid me off, they laid me off along with around eight, five to 800 people at once, you know, across all Adobe, Adobe businesses. This was during the dot-com sort of shrinkage and implosion and all companies were laying people off. And Adobe, you know, one day, 
one day my schedule looked like Tetris. It was just like meeting, 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 you know, a little block for lunch, meeting, meeting, meeting. And then that morning, I remember I went in and suddenly I had a meeting with my boss that was unscheduled. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, what's this about? And she's like, you know, I call her up. She's like, oh, yeah, I need you to come in. I, but I have meetings this afternoon. She's like, yeah, don't worry about those. Cancel. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. So you go in the office, and she's in there looking kind of nervous. And there's another person, and there's HR in there. And you're like, you know, and then they, there's folders on the desk with your name on them. You know, it was like, holy crap. Okay, is this happening? Uh, but long story short, at the, as a result of that, um, I, uh, you know, I, and I've told this story before, I built what I call Operation Fireproof. I went mm -hmm. home, licking yeah. my wounds, and I said, this shit can never happen again. You know, I can never, I can never have my livelihood, the, my ability to eat, pay my mortgage, you know, survive on the planet linked to somebody who is making decisions based on a spreadsheet or any other motivation, you know, whether they be nefarious or whatever, I can't, I can't operate like that. So mm -hmm. the Operation Fireproof was basically me defining and shifting my corporate mindset into I am a, that you're, this corporation is my client. If I choose to work for another corporation, which I did, you know, if I choose to work for another corporation, you will be my client and I'm not an employee, I'm a contractor in my head. And you are a line item in my Google spreadsheet, but there are multiple line items. And one of, part of that breakdown was this week in photo and speaking and doing all the other things that I do so that if one of those, kind of like a submarine, if a submarine gets hit by a torpedo and one compartment floods, the whole thing doesn't go down. You know, right. the way I was operating, it was one big cylinder. If, it, if you poked a hole in it, you're going down. And that was one revenue stream. So. I built yeah. it so that, hey, you know, I could take a hit. It's not going to be nice. It's not going to be comfortable, but I'm not going to be on the bottom of the ocean. You know, I'll be right. okay until I can patch that hole, get the water out, and then and keep going. So, yeah, there's a number of, of lessons like that. And I continue to learn this stuff every every single day. You yeah. know, I'm learning something new about yeah. human behavior and how to deal with certain kinds of people positively and negatively, especially both of you guys are members of my community. And on the community, there's just a rainbow of personalities right. in there, you know, and as the community, <laughs> quote, leader, I call it custodian, as the community, <laughs> as the community <laughs> custodian, I'm the guy that gets to clean up the lunchroom after the food fight, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, and, and it's, it's great. I don't mind it at all because it's like it's it, literally we meet every week. Like today, we're meeting at six o'clock. We do our little Zoom meetings where everybody comes in, hangs out, glass of wine, beer, Jack Daniels, whatever, and we just talk about whatever. Sometimes it's photography related, but the 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 whole feel of it is like okay, I'm I'm learning. I learn more every meeting about everyone. It's like, you know, you're learning about your family members and people right. may come, they may have had a bad week. So they come in, you can tell they had a bad week. So they're kind of quiet. And then somebody else may have had something amazing happen. So they're talking about it. Somebody else is experimenting with some new kind of photography. So they screen share and we talk about it, you know. So, you know, it, the whole the whole nut of everything is your, every, I look at what I've come to know is like everything for the most part, and tell me if you guys agree with this, everything, most things that you do, you can look at as an experiment because nothing, you know, nothing, we, no one can say they have everything figured out. No one can say that, you know what, I got this nailed. Even doctors and lawyers are all practicing law, practicing medicine. Yeah, right. right? And, uh, yeah, and practicing medicine out. is scary to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me practice on you, Renee. Are you going to start wonder, actually doing it? Or are you just going to, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it's fun. But you got to, I did this talk at the creativity conference uh, last week or week before, I think it was, um, on staying curious. The whole talk was about staying curious and being in that mindset of, you know, I hate the whole lifelong learner thing is, is kind of old, but just the, the whole idea of everything is shifting all the time. And right. if you freeze yourself and say, you know what, I know how to use this camera. I know f-stops and shutter speeds and I can make a landscape photo and that's, I know how to do that. I'm, that's all I'm going to do. And you don't look at all the other things that are kind of popping up and, you know, 
the, the opportunities to do even cooler things and you kind of silo yourself. So the whole talk was about, hey, what if you, what if you think, yeah, I, I specialize in this, but I can also try these things and give my right. permission, give, my, give myself permission to experiment and, and fail. You know, it's yeah. okay if I try this. Like, it's okay if I try, you know, uh, whatever kind of photography, Jabari photography, I'm going to try that. <laughs> and then because I saw Renee Robin did it so effortlessly, I'm going to try that. And then you fail and you're like, well, maybe that's not for me. So now I have that knowledge of maybe I don't want to try that anymore. <laughs> so I'm, I mean, you, never admittedly, try, you never know. Admittedly, that's um, the motto behind Newfound Shores, our workshop company, is that mm -hmm. we create spaces for people to fail like safe spaces for people to fail. Like the point is like, we don't want, like we want people to go out there and get great shots, but we also want them to go out there and get average and shitty photos because we want them to try something new. We want them to like push their comfort zone. Cause like, yeah, you're here to like, you know, yeah, you have your goals and your stuff that you want to learn, but it's like, we also are creating situations where people can fail so that they can, it's like, there's no client there, right? No one's going to be judging them on like, oh, look at your terrible photo. And it's like, well, okay, so mm -hmm. why is it bad? And how do we make it better, right? It's not just like, oh, here's a bad photo, ha ha, on to the next thing. It's like, we're setting you up so that it's like, okay, here is the environment. How do you shoot this? And then watching people safely fail and then like giving them the tools so that they can actually successfully, you know, launch that type of image. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's part of the thing that I like about workshops is like watching people fail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and do, you, do, you, do you feel like you when you're leading a workshop, do you feel like you're you're learning too, like during that. Always. I've only led a couple of workshops and I always feel like, you know, it, it's always, I don't know, it, it's always a, you know, imposter syndrome, the little tinge of imposter syndrome in there and then a little tinge of, uh, am I providing enough value to these people for the money that they paid? And then yeah, there's the second the, one oh, for me. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. learning, I, it's this, always, you it's, know, and. It's always the second one. I always want to make sure that like people are, like getting the value of what they paid for for the workshop. I mean, I had I had a woman tell me that uh, last week. Uh, we just finished a second workshop here in Newfoundland, and uh, we had a woman say like, you know, this is like one of the most incredible workshops I've ever been on. Like, I can't like appreciate like the timing and like you know the scheduling of everything. She's like, it's just perfect. And I was a part of me that was like, I might cry right now because like I put we put so much work into this thing. <laughs> so to have it running smoothly is like yeah uh it's like it's a huge compliment to like know that people are noticing the the effort that's going into it but i mean there's a there's a great statement uh you know i forget who said it but it, if you ever want to learn something really well teach it and yeah like mm -hmm. teaching will teaching will teach you so much even just from like i mean i'm sure you know this karen from teaching workshops as well that mm -hmm. you know someone will be like you know oh you do it that way well i do it this way and it's like holy shit that's awesome i never thought about it that way before that is so good you know like that would, well just, that's like, and that's forth. that's one of the things when i was thinking about what, like what kind of like little drips of topics would i love to to yeah. talk about or you know have us talk about today because we have this and i wanted to bring it forward is the whole thing about perspective because you know how when you know how when um you're shooting like in photography mm -hmm. and you and you don't want to just shoot one way whether you're shooting a model or like in my case shooting a landscape or whatever you want to try different perspectives whether that's looking down or up or turning or you know or putting the light mm -hmm. in a different place or putting the subject in a different place different perspectives tells a different story and if you collect enough of them it's like a book like you're telling them this whole story but it's it the the parallel this is what i'm noticing the older i get is these parallels that we, <laughs> I swear to God, I don't feel old, but I just feel like, man, I've been around a long time and all these life lessons are coming around and I hope everybody's <laughs> getting this, is, is the fact that the, the, the overlay, you know, you, um, you just mentioned the word perspective, but the overlay of perspectives that we uh, know to be true in photography also applies to life. So the parallels are so... Um, what am I trying to say? So direct, so connected yeah. that I think, I think you can use photography to learn about life and to learn about uh, inspiration or not as a, such a tie, all these words are so tired, but you know, the quantum mm -hmm. level of all of this and, mm -hmm. and to teach it takes it to a whole new level because you're seeing what you do from a different perspective, which is through someone else's eyes. And then mm -hmm. their perspective changes yours and it just starts to go, wah, 
into this yeah. whole other realm, which makes yeah, you it becomes, them. It becomes this really fun, like, recipe, this, like, ingredients yeah. list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. I just love that. And that, I mean, that's the other thing about, you know, having a, a business in photography or just being an entrepreneur is having just even something as simple as multiple streams of income. It's like different perspectives that you have to offer as, you know, as an artist and as a person who's lived a quite a life and, um, <laughs> and so on and so forth. And I think that's all part of using the gifts, you know, and the gifts we've been given, whether they were like, Oh, this is a fun gift or ow, my effing leg is broken type of <laughs> gift, you know? I, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind sorry, of just, sorry for doing the vanishing act, Karen. Sorry. Uh, you no, know, I'm used to it. You know, it's, it's a, it's a parallel. You it's an overlay. Not, stop it. Stop it. it. You're <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I like to torment you. Anyway, I know I get all philosophical about things, but it just, for me personally, it's a point in my life where I'm sort of like pulling thread together from different sources and getting ready to do a couple of projects that I'm going to be relying on the threads I've been pulling. So then you guys start talking and I'm like, Oh my God, there's that thread. And that thread. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like this uh, person, but that's just kind of what I've been working on is um, going, okay, we've got all this. Now, how do we weave it into something mm -hmm. even more? So yeah. hence my being the philosophicator here. <laughs> philosophicator <laughs> i know i just made that up i literally just came out of my mouth and i'm like oh nice word i'm gonna go make out with, I'm gonna go make out with myself pardon me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um i typically try to keep this at around an hour i kind of blabbed a little in the beginning so we can we can run over a little bit because what i'm wondering is you guys i mean you guys are kind of legendary in a, in a portion of the photography world. People really look up to you. For all... Redrick and I are both just like, nah, the same note I know. switch, the same direction. I know. <laughs> we, well, we all do. And people say that to me. I'm like, because uh, all I can think of is everything I haven't done yet. So um, mm -hmm. it's that thing. But in <laughs> it, okay, so I, I said quantum and I said, you know, if we were to sort of, Throw out and if if we imagine because you know I love I love what if and mm -hmm. I love questions because questions when you ask yourself questions your, your mind wants to answer them. so you can ask yourself questions as what if I fail and what if I whatever and, and your mind will want to answer so I like to play the game of um, what if and then throw something really cool out that I'd actually you know like as opposed to something that I wouldn't like because like you know my critical voice and I'm really tired of that. And um, so, like, if you guys could throw something out there that would actually go out and start, like, there's a quantum field out there that will go and make it for you. Um, and, or maybe it's life. Maybe it's a project. Maybe it's a feeling that you want to have or, or something you want to get past. What would, what would that be? Like, what's your what if? What if it could be like this? Or what if I could mm -hmm. do I've be? always been able to answer that my whole life, except for the last couple of years. I actually don't know anymore. I have no idea. So, so when I used to coach, and uh, because I, I don't coach as much right now, I used to say, "Well, what would you? What would the feeling be? What would you want to feel like?" Because a lot of times, like I don't, I don't really know what what thing in the world would fulfill it, but I know the feeling. Yeah, I have a huge what if. I have a huge one. So yeah. let's hear it. What? My 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 version of what if is is uh, wouldn't it be cool if <laughs> so so what do you mean wouldn't it be cool wouldn't it be cool oh. if money was not an object right like what would what would my world look like if there was no profit motive in there if I didn't if I didn't have to you know just just that shit all the <laughs> obligations that I have that I have to take care of on a daily basis, if all that stuff was taken care of, what would I be doing? Like, what would Frederick look like? Would I still be doing this stuff? Would I still be podcasting? Would I still love photography? Or would I just be, you know, vegging out and, and, and you know, rotting away in a corner somewhere, like, filling my face with food? Uh, and my answer, my answer is that I, I think I would be doing probably very similar to what I'm doing now, but I would be traveling more, provided you could travel, right? right? I think I'd be, 
I'd be more along the lines of a Renee Robin, how she's always, you know, Renee Robin before the Robin got her wings clipped because of current circumstances. Um, but just being able to go around and shoot and create content and meet interesting people and eat strange foods and, you know, just building those kinds of memories is what I do rather than, oh, there's 10 minutes before my next Zoom call. Let me let me scarf a TV dinner, you know, <laughs> so. So that, that's, I think that's, yeah. that's my what if, you know, what would the world look like if, you know, for <laughs> me, if, if money wasn't an issue. Renee, does that, does that ring a bell for you or are you still draw, draw a blank? Because I have a second question. If you, if you draw uh, a blank. I mean, the, the only, the only what if that I have really is one that's unsurmountable. So, um, uh, I've been working on an art book for the last while and, uh, the, it originally was going to have somebody working on it with me, and unfortunately, that person passed away this spring, and that mm -hmm. person is irreplaceable, unfortunately. So um, everything is different now, and uh, it happened twice. Actually, I lost two people this spring who were, both were projects um, that I was working on that were turning into books, and uh, those people, I can't replace them, and I can't fix that. And so that's the that's the big what if that I get really stuck on. That is like, I can't replace these people, but I also can't exclude them. So what do I do with that? Yeah. yeah. So maybe a what if. A so, so, so yeah. That is a hard one. But I, I, I'm not trying to be, but I'm doing it because we don't have like all day in this into the live and who cares, right? So I'm going to go for it um, and say, the thing I have always had to do in those, because we, we're very strong-minded, you and I, <laughs> and um, <laughs> to our own detriment at times. So I have learned to crack, the, crack that one just by saying, I, I have to first think of all the things that ever happened in my life that I could never have imagined on the other side of it. And then they turned out and I'm like, who would have thought that? I never mm -hmm. would have thought that. And it turned out... Mm -hmm so much better in ways I don't even know how that happened. Um, and so, cause I know, I know you, you, you know, it's been hard the last couple months for you and I know you're really familiar with how you don't like feeling, but I'm just thinking, what if they are irreplaceable and it isn't going to be the same and it's not going to be that, but what if it could be something completely that you didn't expect? You don't you can't even imagine it, but it, feels amazing like i mean I have, I have figured i have figured out the workaround for it but uh it it isn't the same <laughs> um and no, it is a good workaround but uh mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it's it's very different now so this is a these are they are band-aid fixes that um and it will be interesting and exciting as a result but it is a band-aid um yeah without I can't give away all the details on it as, as to why that is. Uh, once once uh, we launch the Kickstarter, uh, I will be able to explain more and in detail. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, there uh, I have learned that um, because I mean I have lived in the world of you know always have multiple people in your life um, that can do a certain special thing just in case you know, what if the what ifs, right? Of like, what if something happens to this person? Or what if we decide that we're no longer compatible friends or coworkers or whatever, like always have backups, backups. I've always been the person that's like, um, very good at plan B. Uh, and in both of these cases, uh, there is no way to make a plan B, except a band aid, mm. you know, which um, mm. is unfortunate, but I think it'll still be interesting in the end, I hope so. <laughs> It will. I'm, I'm going to imagine for you that some kind of crazy miracle, some kind of crazy shift happens. You don't even, you don't even. See what I don't thing. understand, what I don't understand is like how the fuck I'm going to raise 30 grand to print this book. <laughs> you don't know, but. Oh you know, my I know God, one, I, know I can't even thing. imagine. Well, maybe you should. <laughs> maybe you, maybe you, like, what would that feel like? You know, it's like, that's what I try to do because there's so many things that I, I find I limit myself on. I'm like, I can't have And I'm like, why? What is, what's the ceiling? What if, it, what if it happened a different way? That's all. 
that's all I ever invite mm-hmm. all my friends when I get into these conversations. And I talk to myself the same way because I run into the same things. And I don't know the answer. And I just have to go. I've seen much harder things than this turn out incredibly, like, miraculously. Why not me? So you don't yeah. know. And you, you, maybe yeah. you don't have to. Maybe that's the lesson. I've been crossing all my fingers and toes and just like head down, just like going for it anyways, like, you know, the same as everything, but it's still, <laughs> yeah. those those losses are very evident, very, very evident. So um, hopefully what we make as a, as a, a replacement is at least an appropriate honor to the people who were there before. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. I'm pretty sure it will be. I can, I can see that. Oh, uh, and I'm so. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna hold that whole. Uh, that whole feeling and thought and idea in my consciousness. What I'm gonna do is imagine that. For you. Fingers super is, crossed. <laughs> yeah. I just. I think that's great. Did we already ask you that, Frederick? Yeah, he answered that. Uh, you answered that. Yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Asked and answered, sir. Asked and answered. Yeah. 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 Clearly it was go. memorable, Karen. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Sometimes you just, zo- you just I, tune out when I talk, right? I don't tune out, like... out when you talk. <laughs> you know, I go I go into an altered state when we talk about this stuff and then I'm like, ah oh, crap, what timeline am I on now? What <laughs> happens to me? I'm like, oh jeepers, and then I lose the thread of this one and I guess somebody throw me a bone, get me back here. <laughs> so welcome welcome to my world. I usually don't let that stuff show, but hey, it's been that kind of week. It's been that kind of week. So, um, I had a couple. I had one more thought here. I want to. I want. I have three more, but I want to look and see which one I want to go with. I didn't know it was going to quite turn out like this today. This is really interesting. I knew it would be interesting because <laughs> we're always interesting. We're playing um, jazz, Karen. We're playing jazz. We're playing jazz. <laughs> Like I said, we're going to do the jazz thing. And I always like to leave people with something from, you know, to think about. And and this one's being pretty philosophical. So if you could, (sighs) looking back on your life, oh, my God, this is just coming to my mind right now. Looking back on your life in 20 years, what is the one most beautiful thing that surprised you the most if you go there, looking back? Mm. Who's going first on that one? Mine's easy. What's yours? Uh, the birth of my daughter. That was that was that was the most terrifying and surprising thing that has ever happened. Right? Because I was like, "Holy crap! A kid, another life form, another you know, expanding my carbon footprint." You know that that whole mindset. And then when she showed up, I was like. You know, even every day, it's like, holy crap, look at this. This is literally, this is the definition of immortality. Because I can, I can imprint on her what I think the world is and should be. And then I can, over time, fade to black. And she's going to carry me and my memories forward over time. And she's just, you know, all the good things, you know, some of the bad things, but mostly the good things of what me and her mom are. She is. So wow. you know, that's that's the most surprising thing. Cause you know, you go through you go through life as a young guy, you're like, Yeah, it's all about hooking up with chicks and you know, the conquest and all that stuff. And the the bad thing is you never want to get your wife pregnant or whatever, but then when you're in a relationship and then it happens and it's like, Oh, okay, yeah, she's <laughs> awesome. I want this. <laughs> so that was the surprising it was very surprising for me of like okay, this is not that scary after all, and I understand, and it makes sense. And it wasn't until she showed up that until I understood it all, right? Until mm-hmm. I understood that, okay, you know, and now I am actually immortal for the most part because I made this other person that's going to carry my, my genes on, you know? So it's really interesting. Wow, that's amazing. She is beautiful. Oh, my yeah, yeah, she's a little, she's a little nut. <laughs> yeah, she's a little nut. <laughs> what about you, Missy? Um, I think, and this is actually unintentionally kind of the opposite. Um, I, there's a part of me that really appreciates the fact that, uh, like, and this sounds negative, but it's actually not, um, the fact that, 
you know, nobody is going to know anything about me in a, like, you know, a hundred years. And for some reason that's very freeing to me. Like I can mm. fuck up and I can make mistakes. And like, and ultimately like nobody fucking cares. And yeah. you know, like think people might care for a little while or I might like lose friends over something or I like, might like, you know, be mad at myself. But ultimately this is, it's a very, it's a very selfish thing for me anyways, to think that anyone, because I'm not having kids, right? Um, and so like that genetic pool stops fucking here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm fine with that. And uh, yeah, the fact that irrelevancy is actually kind of powerful. You know, like we look in history and we're like, oh yeah, sure, like the Caesars and like the leaders of the world, but there have been like billions of people who have come and gone, just these like, little like whispers of stardust in like the vast cosmos. And that for me is somehow just like a very beautiful thing. And I uh, have grown to be far more comfortable with that. And I think that's exciting growing, going forward to, you know, especially in a world where everyone is like chasing fame and like chasing this and chasing that, where I'm just like, man, none of us fucking matter. And that's kind of great. Like, that's like true. it takes so that's much true. pressure off. Uh-huh. It really you know, does. That pressure is just like doesn't exist, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna try this thing, and I might fucking fail miserably. I might try to put this Kickstarter out, and I might get five bucks, or I might get like twenty eight thousand dollars, and then it'll fail, or you know, maybe it will be a huge like success. But all of it, it kind of doesn't matter, and that's very fun for me. Yeah, yeah, is that's that... a, like it's it's like a different tangent. Like it's and none of it's right or wrong. Right. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, we're all we're all in the same soup and we all have different goals and aspirations and all that. Uh, yeah. But one of one of the things I kind of wrote on my mental in Sharpie on my mental board was I cannot create like when I found I was gonna be a girl, I was like, I cannot be responsible for another woman on earth with daddy issues. So I'm <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can so that that you, there may be other issues but it's not going to be daddy issues she's going to have a great childhood and i'm not going to be the cause of any conversations in 20 years about how yeah. my dad screwed up my life right it's not going to be that yeah. wow so, that's huge. that's a good that's goal like, that's yeah. like that's like pattern shifting on a on a whole new level it's important yeah. it really, it's important really is. yeah yeah, yeah. That's yeah, because if I've learned anything throughout my life of like in in my dating era was a large percentage <laughs> of the women that I dated had daddy issues, right? Do you There's, think there... maybe you just had a type? <laughs> maybe I was a type of daddy issue women. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? We will never know. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, I did not want to make another one. So I'm like, you know what? Let me let me see if I can save my future you know son-in-law from, from the <laughs> hell that i had to go through <laughs> so, that's so, so good i love that yeah. yeah that's really really good yeah my mine is sort of like um i don't have kids either um but mine is if like i, I love to play the game of like looking back okay let's go to the future and look back like what 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 surprised me or pleased me or whatever is that sort of like taking where, what you said, Renee, and, and the same thing. Cause I, I actually had some situ family situations where I realized it ends with me mm -hmm. and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I don't have to yeah. save, I don't have to save any of this crap. I can let it all go, but it's so weird because I hung on to it for so long. So what is life like then you let it all mm -hmm. go what's possible then and kind of feels like a little bit of a death you got to go through a little like weird griefy thing and but then on the other side of it what's possible so then looking back the difference I always wanted to kind of make in the world was so the vision that drove my life from the time I was about eight years old because I used to have visions was the one with the light you know I've talked to you guys about that you know the big column of light that came through and washed out so standing pillar of light like literally the vision was that standing on stage light comes through, washes out, feels people, blah, blah, blah. And now it's all I ever wanted to do. But of course, in 3D Earth, you have to do stuff. It's just kind of annoying. And that's always been a problem for me. But, um, but that looking back, 
maybe it was because because of letting go of like all the stuff you're talking about, Renee, or whatever. But looking back, it actually happened. Mm-hmm. And this, and I don't exactly know what all the things were in this looking back model, but looking back, it happened somehow mm-hmm. miraculously that I did do that in this in the way that I was intended, you know, because I always yeah. knew I came here for a purpose, but that it happened. And ah, every time I think about it, I always want to cry because it's really like that it could happen in this hellish planet. <laughs> yeah. It would be a miracle. And I think it actually will. I really do. I don't know why I'm crying, except I do every, I shouldn't even say I do every time I talk about it because I never talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> But you're you constantly know. crying every time we talk about it. So, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> I, know, I know every time we talk about these things, I end up crying. Anyway, so that's that's mine. So I think that there's no mistake that, that, you know, we all met, that we're all having this conversation, and that we work in a medium that utilizes light and time and mm-hmm. encourages creativity and kind of almost demands of us that we move through a really base level of 3D into something more because of the medium that we work with. Yeah. That's just my weird way of looking at it. Yeah. And you know, you know, one thing to throw in there, uh, Karen, is like the, you know, on the, on the topic of procreation and motivation, right? So the, one of the shifts that I encountered was being a, being an old, an entrepreneur, a solopreneur and sort of doing what we do, building businesses and content and training and inspiring and interacting and all that stuff. And the, the, there was a palpable shift once there was a immovable requirement for funds, right? So yeah. when it's just me, like I literally have done this, I could live on on a on a box of ramen noodles for a month and be okay, right? And, yeah. You know the heat can go off if if it needs, and I can I can light a fire, you know, keep what I could. I can survive as an ex-military guy. I can I can survive for a long time by myself, uncomfortably, yeah, uncomfortably, but for a long time I can do right. that. But when there's when there's another human that is that is relying on you in the mix, then it shifts your decision making process. It shifts how much yeah. money you feel like you need to make. It makes you stay up an extra hour at night or a couple of hours to get something done. It makes you. You know, you know what? Let me send this email to this this company. Maybe I can get a you know get something yeah. going there. It makes it pushes it has pushed me in a different direction. Not to say I wasn't motivated before, but it's a different kind of motivation. It's a it is a uh, there is zero margin for failure, right? There is not a there is no well. You can just go live in your car for a while if you want to. There, that option is gone, which means you need to be even better at what you do to generate revenue so that that can't happen right back to that right. childhood thing again so yeah it's a it's an interesting shift i'm sure i'm i'm 100 percent sure i'm not the only one i've heard i've heard other entrepreneurs and and people say this that they're even steve jobs mentioned this like their their motivations have sh- they shifted after they realized that you know hey i have to do all this stuff right too. and it's right. a different kind of shift not to say that you know not have like not having kids makes you less motivated it's more of it's a different kind of, you know, you know, it's a different kind of thing. It's weird. It's hard to articulate. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. A lot of it is. Art is like that. Hard to articulate. But mm-hmm. I do feel just as in, just as in speaking voice, I feel like who we are and really kind of like owning it and letting it swirl through us. It really comes through our work. And, you know, all the retreats that I ever lead, we always start off with this whole, process of going deeper and getting that you know it's a lot like you know when we did the voice stuff Renee you know with the the breathing and the kind of settling in and all that kind of stuff because you got to go in there so that and, and and free stuff up so that the real voice can come out and because we work with light and pixels it embeds itself so I'm tying this back into our photography you know Fridays in that what we're talking about is a really deep level of personal creation and personal creativity and kind of like here we have two epic you know people in the in the photography world who are just you know incredibly creative in very different ways and you know this is the kind of stuff you kind of have to do to get that aside from getting (laughs) your skills up because if you have just a good set of skills great what are you going to do with it 
That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, I heard a, a tree I heard falls a in quote. the forest. I heard a quote a long time ago. Um, oh my God. And it might be from Fight Club. I could be wrong on this, but um, something to the extent of there's a lot of really talented people out there doing fuck all. <laughs> and I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. And on that note, I am going to wrap this up so that we're not uh, keeping people away from their lunch or whatever they're doing. Um, for too long so I just want to thank both of you so much do you want to let everybody know where to find you Renee yeah, Robin you go, you go first, first. <laughs> jinx jinx see that <laughs> see that <laughs> sister from another mister over there I'm telling you uh, uh, you will all for me my room is thisweekinphoto.com so all roads lead to the website you can subscribe to the podcast join the community check all the stuff out that I'm doing at thisweekinphoto.com that is my website Excellent. Missy? Uh, and I am at ReneeRobin.com. So www.ReneeRobin.com is my website. And then uh, at Renee Robin Photo or at Renee Robin Photography or Renee Robin. One of those combinations will get you places to find the things and the stuff. And uh, if you're interested in uh, finding out more about the book, there's not much online yet because I'm still figuring out a bunch of back end stuff. But uh, keep an eye on the social media and everything. And I'm working on getting a, a mailing list sign up thing on the website. So once that happens, then people can sign and what up about, there. What about, what about workshops? Where do people find out about workshops or can they book you for workshops? Yeah. So workshops is www.newfoundshores.com because we run them here in Newfoundland. So, um, but uh, yeah, so newfoundshores.com or at newfoundshores on Instagram is where we have all of the things and stuff listed. And we're just getting ready to launch our 2022 classes. So um, awesome. it should, should be awesome. fun. Yeah, we did gross more in the summer and it was absolutely incredible. So we're running it again next summer with a little bit of modification. So it should be exciting. So you do virtual, please get you... your email list up, Renee. Get your email I got list one for Newfound like... Shores. I just don't have one for my own stuff, which is dumb because I've been doing this for 12 years. And if I'd done it in the beginning, like I was told to, it would be very different. But I am a stubborn bastard. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, and... I can co-sign that remark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do this. Yeah. It's good for you. Fuck you. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly what it is. Here, take this Tylenol. It'll make your headache go away. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd rather suffer because that is reality. <laughs> and that's a good lesson. That's a great life lesson right there. You know, you can stop it anytime you want. Hey, so yeah. um, do you teach virtually, virtual classes at all? Um, sometimes not very often, though. Uh, okay. I mean, especially in the last year, people are really tired of Zoom. But I mean, if someone comes up to me, like, you can always reach out to me directly. And like, I do one on ones as well. So yeah which would be genius because she's got go go look at her website that's all i can say because she's phenomenal <laughs> and i'll pu i'll put all you guys' info in the uh you know in the in the comments on this video um you can yeah. find me at karenhuttonart.com that's my art world and there's some stuff you know all the art side and then events and you know virtual workshops and whatnot at karenhutton.com so that's and go to Renee's go to Renee's TikTok Renee Robin photo on TikTok <laughs> oh my god i do I have a very I just saw that for the first TikTok. time yesterday. Yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. This is, that's the first time I've seen it. And I, and I didn't have time to dig in like I wanted to, but I laughed my ass off. It was awesome. It, <laughs> it's photography and cats. And that's kind of it. And the TikTok algorithm doesn't know what to do with it. And I don't know what to do with it, but I put the things up that I'm interested in. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I just love it. I love very you guys. Cool. Thank you so much for doing this and, and, and plumbing the depths with me because that's what it takes Always. I think sometimes so love you and love you guys out there and thanks for watching thanks for being with us and uh, I'll be back next, next Friday yep. and bye Brenda and Chris it's so good to see you guys in here too <laughs> I know those names <laughs> yay, yay. Yeah, okay. love you guys bye all see you everybody bye.